Hello, 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 and welcome back to another episode of uh, Rise of Nations Ice and Fire with me, Mr. Gill. Um, today we're going to be talking about um, Clash, not Clash, Reign of Chaos. Um, so the last video I did was before uh, our province updated, uh, before the event Reign of Chaos started in our province. It's been about a four or five days since then. So we've done a little bit of work. Let's just do some housekeeping here and get this guy... Continue promoting, please. Promote, yes, thank you. Close, close, fantastic. Um, not much has happened in my little base or kingdom or whatever. I've been a little bit busy with work and stuff like that, so I haven't been playing a lot, but what's this? We got that? Cool, nice. Okay, so let's go. Reign of Chaos. Um, first off, let's go into the event itself and have a look at it. Um, ooh, I'll take that. <laughs> There's always something. Tick, yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Close that. Back into there. Uh, Reign of Chaos. So the idea of this is conquer the land to gain influence. Let's go through the tabs first. Uh, season here is about, about the... Um, uh, who's winning in terms of the different uh, alliances and provinces? Um, we are not really raided anywhere here, actually. Ugh, we're not doing very good. We haven't had a battle yet, so I guess you know. But you know, we'll we'll get there. We'll get there. Um, down here, you can press Alliance Intel. This will give you the season contribution of all of your players, uh, members of your alliance, uh, weekly contribution, and then any war declarations. So any wars that we've had, battles or duels with other alliances would pop up here. Uh, we've had none, as I said. Um, territory. So this is where the actual kind of bit of Reign of Chaos comes in. There are six different new plots or tiles, um, and you need to gain them so that they get you various resources. You can see here, these abandoned farms, I've got level fives, they bring in 1250 per hour of whatever that stuff is, I can't remember what it's called, they've all got different names, etc. Non-functioning quarry, crumbling mine, half burnt logging site, shabby distillery. Now, if I press harvest now, it's going to bring in a couple of thousand of each of those. Um, I then have to process them. Let's grab this reward while I'm here, that's just a normal reward thing being online I think or something like that get out of the way daily challenge I then have to process these raw resources yeah so I go into here into my frontline work workshop uh, I have two now because we built our second alliance center as well go into production and as you can see I'm producing um, this block here which I can't remember what it's called I think that's construction materials but you can see here if I wanted to start a new production I just cancel the other one I can do this this will produce this type of material so will this, that type of material, and on the other side it'll also produce ale. Uh, this one will also produce uh, food. This one will produce uh, marble, as well as this type, and then the other three will do the other one. So this is this type and wood, this thing and iron. This one does both. Now, it won't show me, but it does both of the, the good construction materials. You need those construction materials. Let's do this one in order to upgrade. So you can see I've got a level 4 here. Let's go and view this one. A little bit laggy, sorry. You can see here I can level it up. And I do have the amount of construction materials. I just built that, so that's fantastic. Let's get that level upgrade. And that's going to make everything produce a little bit faster. Let's heal that one. So as you can see, uh, let's go back over here. We have our Alliance Center 1 here. Uh, we have our honor structures around it. There are four honor structures for Alliance Center 1. Uh, you can see here, this is the, um, whatever it's called. I can't remember what they're called now. We saw it in the last menu. Let's go back. Frontline Workshop, Coalition Base Camp, Assault Fortress 1, and Guardian Fortress 1. Okay, so those things are allowed around Alliance Center 1. The two most important ones to begin with are Frontline Workshop and Coalition Base Camp. Coalition Base Camp is what allows you to attack higher level tiles. So by loading up, uh, by upgrading this faster, you will have more loyalty in your troops and it means you can attack higher level tiles. Let's see if we can attack something quite high. So if we go, let's go back over to near RAC2. And so let's find a tile. At the moment we're sitting, we, this is us, the green, and uh, the blue is our other fellow Alliance members. This level 7, let's see if we can occupy that. 
Okay, no. So see, it says here, current loyalty is only 1,101. We will suffer 10.4% total HP damage every turn. It means it's not worth attacking it. So I need to increase my influence value and my loyalty more and more and more in order to do this. In order to do that, I then just have to upgrade my coalition base camps. Okay, now let's have a quick look. Can we upgrade any of them? No. So we need this, the military supplies, which we just started making now. And we need another 36,000 of them roughly um so that's going to take us a while probably until tomorrow at least probably 24 hours i think i'm not producing that fast at the moment but you can see here we've laid our stuff around uh, in concentric kind of rings going out it's not as organized as i'd like it to be uh to be honest we should have a little bit more of the defensive and offensive structures around the interior and the uh the kind of production structures on the exterior but it's not too bad if we scroll over here Let's just get into another state. This is state 42 now. Just saying because we can look over here and we can see... Where's this other one? There's another alliance here. An older alliance which has been here. Oh, they, have they gone? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Wow, okay. So they've left their AC. Alright, that's fine. What you can see from our AC... <laughs> let's go back. Um... What we've done is, you know, once we place the Alliance Center, and that can only be done by an R4, um, and you've probably done this already, but if you're starting the season next week or the following weeks, then, you know, maybe you haven't. But once you place your RC, everybody has to place their honor structures around, start leveling those up, and then start claiming tiles. You can see here, all the blue is our members of our Alliance have claimed these tiles, and they're holding them. Now, what that means is that nobody else can take them. So, on Tuesday... Uh, in a couple of days time we will be in a dual event versus another alliance from another state um, and how we choose that is by going here where is it season uh, oh no we won't be able to choose it yet we can look at it it should be here starting soon total war this will be the menu here and we'll see a list of eight to I think it's eight or ten could be ten current or possible opponents um, and you have three times in which you can uh, declare war against them you can either do it at reset you can either do it eight hours later or you can do it eight hours after that you are able as well to uh, set the truce timer okay so you can see here what i've done is i said we will most likely be trying to declare war at reset and then we will probably won't really don't want to do it here and we could possibly have another war there this is just based on when i think my alliance members are going to be online when i think there's enough of them to help in the war etc etc i asked them all in a mass mail and i wanted to do it this one because that's easier for me but most people came back they're more available around this time and looking back at the kind of the daily logins it's around this time that most people are on so that's fine we'll have to kind of try and get this which is about 3 a.m in the morning for me which kind of sucks but you know i'll do it once or twice and then eventually somebody else can take over doing the declaring and uh, managing the attacking but i've set our truce timer so nobody can attack us between eight and four o'clock game time which is for me the uh, roughly the middle of the day um which is nice it's kind of like late afternoon uh, early afternoon to late um so once you've set your truce timer and all that kind of stuff you need to start taking out your tiles making sure that nobody can pour in what you don't want is gaps of two by two or th any three by three so see this here basically this is nearly a three by three one two three one yeah so that's a three by three space there if these white king kings weren't there um i don't know what that is sorry uh okay get, get away um we should get this filled in because this is still only about 50 kilometers from where we are this is where the enemy alliance who attacks us on tuesday or who we are attacking and fighting can place their alliance rally point so the rally point is really important because you can only build your road i guess i'm going to say road into attacking our alliance center through connected tiles from the rally point so once these guys poured in here they're going to have to connect tile tile and by connect i mean they have to occupy each tile in diagonal or straight dum, dum, dum. 
If they come to one of our tiles, they will have to defeat it first in order to occupy it. So the more tiles we own, the more space we cover, the less area we're giving them and the harder we're making it for them. Because also we will be sitting here and attacking back in, you know, trying to take the tiles that are empty, trying to block them off. A little bit like a game of, oh, I don't know, I thought of it before. But you know the sort of game. You're, they're trying to move forward, we're trying to block them. Very, very simple. But basically, they're going to make try and make a line all the way through, as easy as possible for them, so as fast as possible for them, straight through to our honor structures, destroy as many as they can, again, connecting all of the tiles, and then destroy our Alliance 1. Once they've done that, they can go on and then try and destroy our Alliance 2, 3, and 4. Um, we, obviously, will be on the defense, but we'll also be attacking at the same time. So this is where it gets a bit tricky, is that we will go to their state and try and attack them and do the same thing in their state. We will build a rally point and go la 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 la. So what you really need is a team, two teams. You need some attackers and you need some defenders. Um, also, what you could do and what you probably should do is anybody who can't be online should also probably garrison any of the structures surrounding AC1 as much as possible. If we sent lots of troops here, we can do it there, garrison. That'll make them harder to attack. Um, and that's good for anybody who can't be online during the battle. Make sure they do that so that uh, you at least they're at least uh, helping out in the ways that they can. But it's super important that all of the gaps are filled for a minimum, I would suggest, of at least 50 kilometers away. Now you can see here these white tiles. So these white tiles are actually another alliance within our province, uh, the Alliance Pro, whose alliance center is just over there. Um, and we kind of join up, which is pretty handy because basically the enemy alliance coming to attack us will still have to occupy the pro tiles. They can't just skip them. They'll have to still go through them. So the closer we are, the more we fill in together, the better it's going to be for the both of us eventually. We're kind of covering a whole corner of the map just with two um, alliance centers, which is really, really cool. But super important. Fill in the gaps, fill in the gaps. And that's what we're doing over the next few days. We've done pretty good. But as I said, I want to get to a, about 50 kilometers uh, from our alliance, all the gaps filled in. To be honest, I don't know if it matters that much. It matters more about who you're going to be, who's going to be joining in the battle. Because if you've got lots of fleet people who can defend, then, you know, it doesn't really matter about the tiles. You're just going to be sending wave after wave of wave people defending. If you've got no people playing and defending, you're going to, you know, if it's one or two of you in your whole alliance who are able to act as defense, um, then, you know, you need as many tiles taken as possible. In this situation, I'm not too stressed. Uh, I don't mind if we lose the first couple of battles. It will give everybody playing in this, and no, nobody else on this uh, My Alliance has, has, has kind of played this before. It will give them a good chance to see how stuff works um, and what they should be focusing on. Um, at the moment, I'm happy that we're growing. Everybody's resources are going up, so they're able to produce more um, produce more of this, level up these thingies, wherever they are. I forgot where they're gone. Here. Level up these honor structures. Um, and then come and get these specialities. Okay, so for every kind of honor structure and stuff like that you produce, every battle you have with one of the uh, monsters or a corrupted tile, you can then get honor points. And we've got 10,000 there. We've got 10 times 1,000. That's, that's awesome. So we can use all of these. Ooh, and we've got 157. So we need about 20,000 more. And we will go to level 7. Um, and then as you can see here, We've got we've got six speciality points so far. You get one for each level, and we've gone in here, and we've at the moment we've wrote, we've done this, we've researched this effectively, or, or put the skill into the point into this skill. Nine percent on again after building or upgrading honor structures. That's because I knew I wanted to focus on doing that to start with. I've then also done in here. Uh, processing speed is increased by two percent, and the destruction power. I have is increased by uh, two, three percent, uh, and then in this one I've also done uh, cavalry siege, siege resistance is plus two percent. That's because I only use all cavalry in my legions. You can see here, bam, -de bam, all uh, tier seven cavalry um, because they move faster and they can carry more. Um, it also means. Um, I can focus my research a little bit more but we might go that into that into the next video 
or it could have been the video before this one. I don't know what order I'm going to do it in. I don't know. But basically, class, uh, the reign of chaos is very, very simple. It's a long event. It's 60 days. In 60 days, you will battle, I think, three times a week. So that's going to be about 12 battles, I think, something like that. So it's really important that as an alliance, when you decide to you know defend and attack or when you decide to set your truce timer when you decide to focus your battles is that you get as many of your alliance members involved as possible um, it takes a lot of stamina to defend and attack so you're going to need constant players refreshing i mean there is also lots of strategy you can play you can keep some people back send you know three or four members forward to start the attack and, you know when they run out of stamina they're immediately replaced with somebody else um, a lot of the teleports uh, in the reign of chaos duels are free so teleporting to your rally point I'm pretty sure is free I think teleporting out again might not be free but you do get a benefit from teleporting in yeah I'll also say make sure that every day you kill the white king and every day you kill an undead giant you get benefits for both of those now um, and that when you do take your tiles, like I've done over here, so we built our AC1 a day or two ago, um, and you can see I've taken some tiles there, a level 5, a level 5. To get there, I had to build lots of, lots of empty tiles, but it's far better for me to have those empty tiles sitting back here, say here, covering up gaps in our defenses, so there's no 2x2. Two two. I could probably lose that tile, maybe. Um, then it is to have them here, being kind of wasted our alliance two uh, center two is probably not so well defended but again this if we get attacked here um then i'm going to rely more on brute strength than on anything um, but as i said the first couple of battles for me are about teaching and helping my alliance to learn how to play this um, and how we can best benefit and how every member can best kind of utilize their skills their time and the time is really important because this can take up to two hours per battle yeah if you find a really close um you know close in power alliance similar to yours or with lots of members online same term as you it can go back and forth back and forth i can't tell you the amount of times that you know in previous uh, campaigns you know we've got all the way in here and then they've pushed us back you know back to here and then we're pushed all the way back in and then they pushed us back which brings up another point really really important as you do make that road so remember i'm saying we're making a road from the rally point wherever we can find a gap and we want to place that rally point as close as possible to their ac so in this case it would be here don't worry this will be filled in before we fight um but wherever you can find the gap and you build your road make sure at certain points you use one of your strongest members to garrison a, a, a particular tile um so somebody who's got you know one of the most amazing legions maybe their stamina is running out a little bit get them to garrison because this can be your fallback point just in case you get pushed back a little bit, you've got this bit, you know, with a super legion uh, defending it that is really hard to attack. Somebody with tier 7, you know, maybe 500,000, 600,000 might in, in their legion defending this uh, is going to be, you know, they're going to take four, maybe five, possibly even six hits to move them out of that spot. So build these kind of garrison points, uh, you know, along your road into uh, attacking uh, your enemy's alliance center. Now, as I said, this is a long, long, long thing. And this is only season one for us, for this province. Um, <coughs> and, you know, it, it takes a while and it takes to get a bit of used to. But, you know, play it. Play it how you want to play it. But don't... Uh, ooh, who's that? Yeah, cool, fun. Don't... Don't get too stressed out about losing uh, immediately. Or if you obviously, you know, don't get too stressed out about winning either. Do remember it is just a game um, and it is just enjoyable. And it's far more enjoyable when everybody in your alliance is enjoying themselves as well as you. Uh, other than that, I'm going to say that's it. So this is a video for Reign of Chaos, I guess, uh, before the duels uh, preparation. Um, and, you know, yeah. Uh, I did have somebody comment to me privately <laughs> on YouTube Messenger or some message or something like that. Not a comment, but they said, oh, you know, now we can see where your Alliance Center is. And I'm like, yeah, that's not so important. Um, at the end of the day, we can, uh, we can kind of, if I want to find out everything about Alliance, well, here we go, State 72. Go. Get in there. How do I get in there? What am I doing? Let's just go in here like this. 
State 72, yeah. Say we were, we're in a battle with them. I think we are, actually. Um, then, you know, what I can do is I can first off... It won't show me their alliance centers. But let's check the corners. Oh, look at that. FUK Sims. So their alliance center is somewhere around here. Um, it's not too hard to find alliance centers, yeah? And before the battles, spend some time researching your enemies, finding out where they are, uh, where their gaps are. I mean, these guys... Oh, where are they? How close are they? Where is it? Ooh, okay, so it's there. So what's the closest point? These guys killed us a bit yesterday, so I'm a bit annoyed. See, that's the closest point, which is only really about 30 kilometers away, 29. Not too hard to attack. Not too hard to attack. I could see you doing that. Wow, that's actually quite a big thing there. All right. Maybe we won't take these guys on. They look pretty good. Um, anyway. I'll leave it there. Uh, sorry for the delay in videos, as I said, a bit busy at work. Um, but let me know if you want to see more of this by clicking the like button. Um, I will, if possible, record one of the duels. Not the one on Tuesday, not the first one, but maybe one on uh, next weekend. I can record a whole duel so you can see stuff. Um, and I mean, by that point, you'll probably have had a few duels yourself. But every kind of bit of information helps you learn to be better. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you soon. Cheers. Bye.